So I had the idea about 10 years ago that we could actually get insights into the way humans make decisions if we took blood and looked for markers of brain activity. And so this led to me having a giant freezer full of blood products in my office. So my dean called this vampire economics. So I started this area in neuroeconomics because I was trying to understand why countries are poor. And I had found in the late 90s that levels of interpersonal trust were among the strongest predictors economists have ever found to understand why poor countries are poor and don't grow and why rich countries stay rich. So rich countries are by and large high trust countries. But the question was, once you understand the environmental conditions that produce trust, why would you ever trust a stranger? And so we designed this experiment that uh, came out of Vernon Smith's work, Experimental Economics, in which you could send money to a stranger, make it grow, and then that stranger could either keep all the money or return it to the per first person. So the standard trust game has people come into the lab, sit in partition booths, so they have lots of uh, privacy, they're given a secret number so their data are anonymous, and there's no deception, they're paid in cash at the end of the experiment by someone who's not involved in the experiment, by a cashier. So everyone's matched in pairs randomly. You can't see the persons you've been matched to, you can't talk to him or her. Everyone gets 10 bucks for showing up, for sitting in these hard wooden chairs for an hour and a half. Within each pair, there's a first decision maker and a second decision maker. And after lots of instruction, the first decision maker is prompted by a computer to take some of his or her $10 and ship it to the person they've been matched to. Whatever they choose to ship comes out of their account, but gets tripled in the other person's account. All right, so if you give up, say, eight of your $10, you keep two, they just got $24, plus the 10 bucks they got for showing up. So the second person gets a prompt by computer saying, hey, person one sent you $24, your total is 34. Do you want to send some amount back to the first person? What we find is about 90% of first decision makers will send money, and 95% of those who receive money return more than they received. So the 5% are people who never reciprocate uh, in these kind of money exchange experiments. So they're unconditional non-reciprocators, lots of syllables. What do we really call them in my lab? We call them bastards. We have uh, studied people who are uh, sexually abused or abandoned, and if you have enough abuse as a child, the brain areas that are needed to process oxytocin don't develop properly. So you have this kind of acquired psychopathology. Before 10 years ago, oxytocin was only known to be active in the human female during breastfeeding and sex and released by both sexes during sex. That was it, reproductive hormone. We found that it's not just a female hormone. Both males and females produce this in the appropriate settings, when it's time to cooperate, when it's time to trust a stranger, when it's time to reciprocate. So we really have a biology for reciprocation. Coupled with that is testosterone, which gives us the biology of punishment. And so it's those two sides of the coin that let us balance appropriate social behaviors. Humans touch a lot. So we did a study where we showed that touch induces oxytocin release. And so, you know, you have to believe your own research. So I began putting that research into practice by refusing to shake hands with people and hugging everybody. Right, so we've shown that the more money you receive in this so-called trust game, when someone's shown they trust you in a tangible way, and that's key for these experiments, the more your brain pumps out oxytocin, and those higher oxytocin levels are correlated with how much money you return. So I think one of the values of this work to economics is it provides a new foundation to understand why people are doing what they're doing. So in this trust game, economists would say that individuals are irrational because they were returning money to a stranger. But in fact, the irrational people walked out of the lab with more money than those who were, quote, rational. What I've tried to do in my work is to provide the biological foundation for human behavior. When you have the opportunity, in some sense the luxury, to induce oxytocin release in other people, that causes them to be empathic. And it's that empathy that allows us to modulate our behavior to the environment we're in. And so we go from Adam Smith's theory of moral sentiments to the wealth of nations. It's this empathy that lets us understand others, which leads to moral behavior, which leads to trust, which leads to a greater number of economic transactions at lower transaction costs. Obviously most business deals, even you know, mergers of big corporations, work on a handshake. Or the lawyers are gonna work out the details but you've got to want to actually follow through on this because what happens if you don't? Hmm, 
for social creatures, reputation. They say, oh, that guy is not a fair dealer. I'm not going to do business with him anymore. So you can't induce your own brain to release oxytocin. You can only give this to somebody else. So if you give this gift, our biology has set us up that people re re will return it to us. You've got to give love to get love, and you've got to give it freely. If you do that, it'll come back to you many folds.